And we are talking Mark Jacobs today. Now, there's a very special reason we're talking Mark Jacobs because it's Pride Month. It certainly is, hence the fact that I've got this out of the wardrobe today. Yeah, something very <laughs> subtle from Paul today. I've gone for a slightly more muted pastel, but that's fine. So Paul, tell us why Marc Jacobs and Pride are so connected this year. Well, for the first time on this brand, we really have an opportunity to bring Pride to life through the Marc Jacobs fragrances. As we know, um, Mark as a designer is very much about you being, you know, your authentic self, being true to who you are, and finding this idea of self-love out there, which is a message that I think everybody can resonate with these days. You know, we've all been through such a, a turbulent time, and everybody's kind of got to a point in their lives where I think we really do appreciate who we are and the fact that we're here and the Marc Jacobs fragrances are there to help us celebrate our individuality and that's why we think that uh, partnering with the Pride um, you know movement this year is going to really work well with the Marc Jacobs fragrances because they've equally got that very strong message. And that perfect as I am you know representation from yep. Marc Jacobs actually fits perfectly. Now we are also partnering with the guys from Marc Jacobs throughout you'll see lots of stuff in our stores and a couple of Pride events this year, you'll see some representation from the perfume shop and Marc Jacobs together, so keep your eyes peeled. Now, we're gonna dive into the fragrances, yep. so let's have a look first at Perfect. So the original Perfect. Um, yep, so this is the original. Oh, we've actually, we've got them the wrong way around. Oh, we? but that's all right. We're, it could only happen we're, live, we're, it could only happen live. We're being diverse, it's fine, it's <laughs> fine, it's great. Um, so these are the Perfect fragrances and they're only a couple of years old. So the original Perfect was yep. launched in 2020. Immediately the bottle should catch your eye, beautiful. It's gorgeous. How many charms are on the top of that, Paul? There are 10 different charms altogether. Oh, and you could tell me every single one, but I'm I not going to challenge you. I'm not going to challenge you to do that. <laughs> but it's, it's gorgeous, cutesy, playful, and, you know, the, the fragrance itself is really, you know, very, very easy to wear. It's soft, it's gentle. We call this a comfort floral fragrance because mm. it's, it's very, very gentle. But this scent did phenomenally well when it launched. It was the biggest launch of 2020. Amazing. So whilst we were all in our homes, you know, kind of looking out on the world and thinking what on earth is happening, people were reaching for fragrances to make themselves feel good uh, about themselves and maybe trigger a memory or an emotion or a moment. And this fragrance really did uh, warm the hearts of the nation. It's incredible to think of the position that everybody was in that a launch was that successful, you know, and it was, it was amazing and it did so well for us and our yeah. customers. Just to remind you that what will happen, you'll see up, up in the screen, the fragrances will appear. And if you like the sound of the fragrance, you can always give us a love heart. We love the love hearts at the perfume shop, but you can also add the product to your basket and it'll minimize the screen and it'll take you through to our checkout. Um, and you can still watch us. You can still carry on watching us as you shop. But Paul, this is beautiful. Yeah, What's actually in the fragrance? So this is a beautiful fusion of sort of bright florals, but soft woody notes as well. Mm. So you've got some daffodil in here. Oh, okay. There's a little bit of rhubarb as well that's giving you that sharpness. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pick that out. And then in the, the, the notes that develop later on, you've got a very sort of soft cashmere note, and it's all rounded off with some woods as well. But I want people to think about this as almost like wearing your favourite cosy sweater. It's yeah. got a real comforting feel to yeah. it. It's yeah. almost like very, it's very soft, but really, really beautiful. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Or you could even say, this is like getting a hug from your best mate. It's oh, that lovely. Come on oh, in. Oh. <laughs> I'll pay you later for okay. that comment. <laughs> But it's gorgeous, it really is beautiful. And the great thing about this is, you know, again, in the world of Marc Jacobs, what we're saying about Perfect is that if you like the smell, try it, wear it, it really doesn't matter who you are. No, because I, I would say, actually, that's really nice for me, I would kind of think, on a nice hot day, yeah. you know, you want to feel something quite, it's light but kind of warm at the same time, that yeah. doesn't make it, but this is obviously a little bit yes, more intense. Yes, this is a bit different, it? yeah. So this is the, the newer interpretation of Perfect. So this came out in uh, the autumn of 2021. And kind of moving on from the story of Perfect, where we had this idea of, you know, self-love. Yeah. And kind of coming to terms with the fact that, you know, we're comfortable in our own skin, we're perfect as we are. Once we accept it ourselves, mm. we then need to shout this to the world and tell okay. everybody, you know. And we, you know we're good at that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so, of course, it's a bit more glitzy. 
There's a slightly more glamorous feel with this because of the gold as yeah. well and the accents on the bottle. And the fragrance is, is warmer and deeper, so it's more intense as well. It's great because you're just kind of upgrading your mood slightly, aren't yes. you? Like, like you say, if you want to make an entrance, possibly more of an evening fragrance, so you might wear that in the day. And then when it's time to party, get your gold shoes out. Or what colour are they? Yeah, they yeah. They're, oh, they're, uh, yeah, they're like transparent gold this oh, time. Oh, but yeah, there you go. A bit like a Cinderella slipper <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> Lovely. Okay? Yeah, it's beautiful. But this, again, has a slight... Um, more gourmand, so a slightly more edible uh, quality to the same this ingredients, or have we got a little combination of anything extra? Yeah, there's a little bit of similarity. So we've carried the daffodil through in this yeah. again. So and um, you know we've still got those slightly soft woody notes in the base. But what's kind of making the big difference in this is a roasted almond. Oh, yeah, okay. Ooh. So if anyone watching enjoys a little glass of amaretto, you know, yes, or two or Just three. Just a couple. Yeah, that's kind of what this gives us as a as a note. It's got that slightly warm slightly sweet sensation it's much richer than the original fragrance but those woody undertones mm. really come through but it makes this fragrance smell delicious absolutely gorgeous lovely thank you for that Beautiful. so that's the perfect collection so shall we start back at the beginning oh we shall let's, Mark Jacobs. let's move these off and I'll bring these on okay so, so these are beautiful oh Oh, this takes me back. Back in time. Back in time. When did this launch? <gasps> 2007. Wow. Can you believe it's been 15 years since My the launch goodness. of the original Daisy? My goodness. This took the industry by storm, didn't it? It, it did. really did, because there was nothing like it out there. Not at the time. And I mean, you and I have known this fragrance for a long time, so we, we totally get it, don't we? And also, not many people really knew Marc Jacobs. No. So, you know, obviously the fashionistas know him. And, yes. you know, if you knew your handbags and your accessories and your fashion, you'd know. But in the UK, people would come in and they wouldn't say, Can you, have you got a bottle of Marc Jacobs? They'd say, have you got a bottle of Daisy? Yeah. And it was like that for some time. But now, obviously, people are, you know, well versed in who he is. But tell us about Daisy. So Daisy was launched um, in the middle of, you know, a global recession. It was when, again, the world was full of doom and gloom. There wasn't much fun out there. You know, people were worried about their money, their finances, their life. And a little bit, you know, history's repeating itself at the moment, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? 15 years yeah, on? No, definitely. Long through it again. Um, so Daisy was meant to be sort of like a beacon of hope, a little bit of optimism in a bottle. Something that immediately, when you looked at it, it radiated positivity. It was fun, it was playful, it was carefree, very much like the spirit of who Marc Jacobs is. You know, not taking life too seriously. Yeah. But also a fragrance that kind of transported you away from, you know, the everyday, away from the mundane. It gave you that feeling of being, you know, in the middle of the countryside. Yeah. You know, running through uh, the, the hills, you know, a bit like Maria Von yeah. <laughs> With daisies <laughs> running through my hair. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> you know, making daisies. Daisy chains, all yeah. the simple things that we perhaps forget about and take for granted. But Daisy is a bright fragrance, it's, it's luminous, it's fresh, and it's so incredibly popular. I think if people out there still haven't tried Daisy, we would so encourage you to have a little spray of this because it's really, really pleasant and, and it's an instantly appealing scent. It's interesting, is it? The, the young women that wore it are probably introducing it to their, yes. their daughters yep. now as a because it's a great first fragrance isn't it because it's not cloying it's not overpowering it's not making a massive statement of no. like you know here i am you yeah know, it's, it's a really beautiful fragrance yeah so again what's what's in the fragrance for so in this one again you've got a real sort of freshness to start with so you've got a fabulous wild strawberry note in here and again that evokes feeling of you know being in the countryside going out and you know picking strawberries in the fields, that sort of thing. So it starts off with this real sort of crisp freshness. Then you've got jasmine in here, so classic florals, a little touch of violet as well. You can smell that, it's very yeah. delicate though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very much so. And then in the base notes again, it's all anchored by woods. So it's soft, it's quite smooth, and it gives it this very sort of subtle delicacy as well. And we kind of giggle sometimes because it evokes the feeling of like a green banana. Oh, really? Yeah. If you ever, you know, imagine when you sort of um, 
split open a banana that's not yet ripe, it's got that real sort of fresh burst of greenery in it as well. Okay, I'm not a fan of bananas. So oh! <laughs> you doesn't doing smell it. like bananas, no. though. <laughs> oh, no. But now I know what a green yeah. banana smells like. There you like. go. Thank you. No, Beautiful. it's absolutely gorgeous. And, and that, that structure of the fruits with the florals and the woods is something that you find throughout most of Mark Jacobs' fragrances, isn't it? And he changes yeah. what type of berries and things yes. like that. So yeah, absolutely. And it becomes a really easy signature for people to pick up on because yeah. the chances are if they try one of Mark's fragrances, they'll pretty much like most of them because yeah. that construction kind of runs consistently throughout the entire range. Great. Let's, so we also have... Um, an intense version of Daisy. Yes. So this is another new version. And what we were hearing from a lot of people out there is that they absolutely love their original Daisy fragrance. But when it comes to things like maybe a special occasion mm. or perhaps an evening or they, they're going to a certain event, uh, they wanted something that maybe lasted a little bit longer. So we brought out the oh so intense version to kind of tackle all of those customers who are demanding those long lasting fragrances. There's something in the box. What's in that? Oh, it's warm, isn't it? So yeah. are you picking up a slightly sort of honey note? Yeah, I was going to say it's almost like a caramelly kind of honey. Yep. So it's much sweeter, yeah. much deeper than the original Daisy. Uh, but the other thing again in this is that there are green mosses as well. Okay. So it's got that sharpness. And that really helps, as you said, with the longevity and making that fragrance last yeah. longer. And it's kind of like capturing, you know, again, the, the countryside theme, but imagine sort of being, uh, you know, on the hillside just as the sun is starting to go down. Oh, that sort of golden glow that is sort of the suddenly in the hue. Yeah, really or the golden lovely. hour, they call it, I think, don't they? The golden hour. They do, hour. they yeah. do. That's absolutely lovely. Now, remember, I mean, let's know. Talk to us. What do you think? Have you tried any of the Mark Jacobs fragrances? And if you have, which is your favourite? But remember, if you want to try the fragrance yourself, you can just buy the fragrance as well by clicking on the, the icon above us as well. So, really lovely, Paul. So, that's the original Daisy yes. in um, the original fragrance and in the Intense. Yep. But we're going to look at... Um, Oh, so fresh now. This was the second fragrance, wasn't it? It was, yeah. So this came out a few years after the original fragrance. And again, it was a contrast to the original Daisy because this is a much lighter interpretation. This is one that you'll probably need to apply um, a little bit more frequently because it's more delicate and more subtle. There's a fabulous sort of powdery undertone to this as well. And of course, with the Oh So Fresh, you're gonna get a slightly bigger bottle. Uh, there's a 75 mil and 125 mil. So there's a slightly bigger offering because the idea is that you'll need to spray a bit more with it being so light. And what tips would you give people, Paul, to make their fragrance last longer? Well, one of the biggest things you can do is really try and buy or, or wear the body products, the accompanying, um, you know, ancillary products that are in the ranges. If you get them in gift sets, sometimes if it is that you can buy them individually. And what these do is help you layer the fragrance on your skin. So you do build it up gradually and eventually your fragrance should last up to three times longer. If you think to yourself, you know, you may be shower first thing yeah. in the matching shower gel, then you can pop your body lotion on or you can put your fragrance on and pop your body lotion on afterwards to sort of mask it slightly. Yeah. But what that should be doing is gradually building up the intensity of the fragrance on your skin so that you're then able to wear that much more comfortably and confidently that it's going to last longer throughout the day. And where would you say, where would you recommend people spray their fragrance? Oh, well, I mean, a certain, a certain person once said that you should wear your fragrance wherever you want to be kissed. Wow. But I'll leave that with you. But um, it really is, you know, um, your choice at the end of the day. Uh, the idea, of course, is to spray it onto pulse points, you know, yeah. where, where uh, body heat is generated a lot on your body. Um, you can wear it on the back of your knees if you wanted. Um, ladies can wear it in their decolletage down here. Yeah. Uh, lots of gents uh, spray liberally all over their torso and their arms, things like that. Um, but there really is, a, you know, a varied way of, of wearing That's what works for you, doesn't exactly. it, really? The un oh, I was going to say, the only thing I will be um, I will remind people of is that just be cautious when spraying on clothing and garments because part of the challenge that you do have is that you'll get fragrance build up and if those garments aren't regularly laundered you're going to end up finding that all of those scents really do merge together. Different get, combinations. Yeah, so it doesn't Creating right. your own scent. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, we generally say that when you spray a fragrance as well, you should do it about 20 centimetres away yeah. because it's always best to spray the fragrance and have the scent just descend onto your skin as opposed to spraying it directly onto your skin. Because mm. if you start to see the, 
the fragrance actually form as a liquid, then you're not getting the best part of your fragrance. It should be a fine mist. Yes. Yeah. And don't, I mean, people again apply differently in terms of, you know, application. Um, some people have sprayed it and, and kind of walked into it. into it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because you don't want a mouthful of your favourite scent, really. It's not pleasant, especially not before you're about to go out on a big night. <laughs> uh, but I would say be just a bit cautious of that. Uh, it's something that, that people have done in the past, but it can go in your Maybe eyes. Maybe do it as an arc. Yeah, like that might work, yeah. like you know, but yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like, shh. yeah, definitely, whatever works for you, though, exactly. But what do you think of this? I love this now. Yeah. The fruits are slightly different, aren't they? At yeah. the top of this. Yeah, so instead of strawberry, this time we've got raspberry yes. in this one. So it is slightly sharper again. Yeah. Um, there's there's a, a really different type of sweetness with raspberry. If it, if it is that you're watching, you're a fan of raspberry as a fruit, you maybe have those um, you know, drinks, ice creams, things like that, versus strawberry, you'll know that it's got a slight bitterness to it, the, yeah. the raspberry. And that's really the, the biggest difference in this. Because it's meant to be a fresher fragrance, it is going to be sharper and more crisp on the skin so that's why people go into this one because it's a lighter fragrance for every day are you strawberry or raspberry i'm more strawberry if i'm, I'm more raspberry oh I'm there you bitter go. than you see, but life's all about balance you <laughs> it see. Is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right so we're moving on to um should we we'll, we'll carry on on this side shall okay we? yeah um and we will talk about daisy love yes do we have another box for daisy love oh don't worry is that that's the that's, original daisy yeah and love. i've got daisy Love oh, oh so sweet. Yeah, perfect. Okay. No, that was the other one. It was, yes. Yeah. See, <laughs> see that's a, you can't no say anything these days. You can't say anything these days. Um, so Daisy Love is another recent um, interpretation. This has been around for about three or four years. And this was designed to be completely different to all of the other daisies out there. You tend to find that Daisy Classic, Daisy Oh So Fresh, mm. uh, Daisy Dream as well that we've got here, they are all much lighter floral fragrances. They are kind of floral fruity if you want to give them a, a description, yeah. um, you know, as a, as a collective. But Daisy Love was designed so that it brought a completely different scent to the Daisy family. With this, what you'll find is it's much deeper, mm, it's much more straight away. Yeah, more edible again, it's much sweeter fragrance. It's got that slightly sort of vanilla-y yes. base. Which gives it. it a bit of warmth straight away yes. as well, isn't yeah. it? And what you've got in this one, so the fruit theme is still consistent, but in this one you've actually got something called a cloudberry. Oh a okay. cloudberry. Yeah. How, yeah. how how do you create a cloudberry? Well, a cloudberry is is a type of fruit that grows on onto a bush. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't think yeah it's, it's a genuine. Berry. It's a genuine. I thought berry. you were making up. There's no, a cloudberry. No, I'm it's like, a genuine, okay. genuine ingredient. And most fruits, when they're ripe, tend to get um, a slightly richer colour, so you know that they're ready for picking. Well, with a cloudberry, when that is at its ripest stage, all of the berries turn white, so they look like little clouds. That's Is amazing. It? I'm going to look at that. Oh, there you go. Get onto old yeah. Google then when I'm finished here. Look at me cloudberries. Yeah, I think some countries use it as um, like a, a, a delicacy as well. So there okay. are some countries that eat uh, eat cloudberries as part of their, their meals and things. So it's oh. quite, a, quite an unusual note. It's really lovely though. It's gorgeous. Yeah. But it is me definitely meant to be sweeter. And the difference with Daisy Love is we took the campaign away from the countryside and we actually went to the beach. So okay. in a kind of similar vein, if you like, to the Daisy um, Intense, this kind of evokes the feeling of playing on the beach with your friends in the evening sun. Imagine you've been, you know, fooling around all day, just enjoying yourself. And then just as that sun starts to set, you sort of get that warmth in the air that's sort of starting to change the atmosphere again. So that's what that's meant to be like. That's really lovely. You kind of get that as well from it's, it's wonderful when the stories you tell really evoke yeah. the, the fragrance. That's where you tell the stories, I guess. Exactly. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um, oh, this is... So this is, this oh, is different again. Yeah. Yep. So this is even sweeter than... Oh, yeah. The, hence the name, you know... Oh, so sweet. sweet. Exactly. And what I always think about this bottle, it looks like a sweet itself. It looks like candy. It does. Yeah, okay. That lovely frosted glass as well. And, and, like the bottle designs, we haven't actually really talked about them, have we? Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Stunning, stunning bottles. And like you were saying before, you know, 
Daisy was a game changer when that launched yeah. because the bottle was so elaborate. The industry had never really seen anything before that played around this slightly more unusual, uh, you know, aesthetic. It was it was very desirable. People wanted to play around with them, and everybody loves the bottles. We've even had people in store who weren't bothered about what the fragrance smelled like as they long just as the bottle. Yeah, as long as they could have the bottle. And these are are no exception. Um, the Daisy uh, was actually inspired originally by Mark Mark Jacobs' dog. Oh, so that's the, so the cute. that's where the name originally comes from, and also those vintage swimming caps from years gone by. <laughs> yes. If you ever remember that, not that I'm saying you ever you know wore them, but uh, from years gone by with the daisies on, things like that. You know, all those <laughs> Hollywood superstars that were yeah, captured. Just, yeah. just like myself. Yeah, but that's why these bottles kind of evoke the the sort of splendor and and the the simplicity. So, I was, you took the words out of my mouth, Paul. So. This one, what is in this one? Do we, do we have cloudberry? We haven't got cloudberry in this one. We've got frozen fruits in this one. So right. again, there's a fusion of different berries in here. But what is giving this a sweetness is um, a slightly synthetic note, which we call sugar musks. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So imagine the, the taste of sugar and how sweet that is, how it can kind of hit you and make you tingle because it's, it's yeah. such a rush. And then, of course, the muskiness in here gives it, again, that slightly soft, creamy texture as well. So the sugar musks are what we play on in the, um, the Oh So Sweet. I think, I, I, for me personally, the, the Daisy, this one, this is the one for me. Yep. But I like this, but it's probably a little bit too sweet. But again, you know, a girly, girly scent. Absolutely. If you've got, Something for everybody. Yeah, young teenagers who are, you know, looking for the the next grown up fragrance and this is probably one to, to really consider absolutely so we are gonna talk about daisy dream now yes. Paul, aren't we good old daisy dream and there again we we're going back to that structure of fruits with the florals in the woods aren't yes. we yes yeah. so this one um again look at the daisies this time they're they're in much smaller sizes but they're all over the bottle so they look really cute and playful and you could only get the daisies on the cap with I think the 50 mil and the large size in this so you know anyone watching and thinking of gifting I would always say think about the, the larger sizes because you're going to get a much prettier bottle for your money but yeah this is I would say the softest of all of the daisy fragrances so this is the, the most gentle and this is a much more whimsical scent and you know if you're like me quite often my head is in the clouds somewhere and I'm always thinking about different things. I'm always dreaming of where I'm going to go next or what's, you know, what's for dinner tonight even. So Daisy Dream is about capturing those moments where our head just kind of disappears from the real world for a moment. But it's, it's a much brighter, um, much more subtle fragrance than all of the others. Mm, really gorgeous. And again, what are the fruits in there we've got? Okay, so it's blackberry this time. Oh, okay. Yep, so blackberry is in this one. So again, it's a deeper fruit, but it's it's quite a soft fruit. It's not sharp and no. fresh like the others. It's, it's much more subtle. And then the other floral note that we've added to this to sort of complement the blackberry is blue wisteria. Oh, okay. I love a wisteria. Yeah, so imagine how that grows. Yeah, absolutely yeah. love that. It's always kind of present. But it's, yeah. it's not a, a, a type of flower that shouts like a, a, you know, a jasmine or a lily, things like that. So the, the blue wisteria gives it that slightly, again, uh, powdery, soft sensation in the, in the scent. But it's, it's just gorgeous, this. Absolutely gorgeous. And again, show us the love if you've tried any of this. Let us know if you've tried any of the Marc Jacobs fragrances and which one's your favourite. And remember, again, you can shop just by adding the fragrance by the, uh, touching the little icon. Now, we're going to finish off with um, the... This year's collection of yes. limited editions. Now, this year, I think they look absolutely gorgeous. I mean, they always look special, don't they, Paul? Yeah, they do. They, they're so beautiful, these. They really are. I'm just trying to... Yeah, work, see how we can fit them, them on this, on this display here. So oh, you're well, well done, you. I'm used to, used to sorting, you know, you are, things out in you? small spaces like that, definitely. Very good, Paul. So, tell us the concept of... Daisy Skies. Okay. Well, every year for the past few years, Mark has done a limited edition collection on the Daisy franchise. And what these are meant to be is just a slight reworking of the original fragrances that we've talked. They have a little twist with maybe a couple of different ingredients. And um, we also bring a slightly different story to the packaging. And the reason why the packaging changes every year is that we usually have inspiration from Mark's runway shows. So you may well have seen some outfits in his recent collections that capture the same colors that we've got okay. here. So it's a story that we link from the fashion 
fashion that we can filter down into the fragrance. Brilliant. And they are only available in one size each, aren't they? Yes, they are. We've previously done um, a few versions with the smaller and the larger sizes. And then we used to do all four of the Daisy fragrances in the limited editions. But for the past few years, we've kind of removed that back down to three. Straight to the back. Yeah. Just makes it easy for people when they're deciding. And again, the Oso Fresh is the largest out of all of them, isn't it? With yes. the 75 ml. Yeah. So again, better value for money in terms of, you know, the, the size that you're getting. But of course, they're lighter fragrances, so you will need to apply it a little bit more often. So let's try the original, well, the Daisy Skies. Gorgeous, this. So the whole concept behind Daisy Skies mm. this year is it's about pressing the reset button. Mm. And, you know, thinking again, we've talked about this, about what's been going on in the world over the past couple of years. Daisy Skies is really sort of taking that moment to sorry, escape the, the real world. Imagine going to a coastal destination. Imagine standing on a cliff edge. I mean, not, not <laughs> right on the edge, obviously. But imagine looking out across the water and thinking about all of those infinite possibilities that the horizon mm. presents to you. It's so very it's very bright. Yeah, tranquil. Um, you know, calming, very, very gentle. And in the original Daisy, we've got this beautiful lotus flower. So I want you to imagine, you know, the lotus flower sort of bobbing along on the water, very sort of serene and blissful, and doing, uh, doing its own thing, you know. Uh, that's what the, the Daisy Skies is meant to evoke. So it's a slight twist on the original, but it's the lotus flower in this one mm. that really gives it that, uh, that little edge. And then we'll move on to Daisy Oh So Fresh. Yeah. But this again, just a, a really sort of light, bright, <coughs> elegant fragrance. Nothing that's going to take too much away from the fans of the original. That's the great thing about all of these is that if you've liked the classics, these would be a perfect addition to, but to the wardrobe. There's one ingredient that's been upped the ante on yes. this one, isn't it? Yeah, they, they really do kind of infuse these amazing additional notes in this. And this has got sort of extra fruits in here as well, so it's really boosted it. Frozen fruits, again, just to give it that, that kick, that bit of um, summertime um, effervescence, if you like. That's the best way I would describe this. And you kind of get the violet slightly more yes. intense, don't you? Yeah. So it's certainly more than the original, because in the original it takes a little time for that to come through, yes. but you kind of get it straight away with this one. Yeah. Well, that, that's personal. No, exactly. And the thing is, that's the beauty of fragrances. Everybody kind of picks out different things. Mm. So if it is that the, your nose is, is smelling, you know, a certain ingredient or if it's something that's triggering, um, you know, your, your imagination, then the chances are it could well be in there. Yeah. It's just that we call out certain notes because of their higher concentration. Yeah. So it just works. It's great. But beautiful. And then we're going to finish off with um, Daisy Love in the skies edition yep and as we said with the daisy love fragrances overall these tend to be the sweetest of the daisy family and what we wanted to do with the skies version is we wanted to just again balance that sweetness with something mm. a bit sharper so what you should find in here is that there's almost like a sea salt essence okay so it's giving you that slightly more sort of ocean breeze mm. slightly more aquatic again sharp as well to contrast the traditional sweet notes of this but imagine sort of standing on that beach and all of a sudden it's that kind of almost like, yeah yeah it, it's it's almost a slight powderiness to it but almost smells like skin kind of yeah tone yeah and imagine i mean we're fans of lots of sweet treats and things, yeah. you know, especially, you know, Christmas time, that kind of thing. One of the, the most unusual combinations we've seen in confectionery over the last few years is salted caramel. Yes. And that's a little bit like how I would describe the, yes. the Daisy Love fragrances. You're put, you know, you know, when you walk past a street vendor and they've got yeah. those caramelized, yes. like, roasted yeah. nuts type, it's, it's that kind of, a little scent, bit, yeah. a little bit almondy, yeah. but, but warm, um, sweet. Yeah, exactly. A little bit honey. Very, you're, you're completely right with that, that, that caramel. Yeah, they're gorgeous. But the big thing about these, everybody, is that they're only a limited edition. We only have them for a few months every year, and then what traditionally happens is they get discontinued, and then in the spring of the new year, we launch something else. So if you like these, if you find the bottles appealing, if you get the chance to smell the fragrances, then please do consider taking them there and then, because chances are you'll think about it, and when you're ready to buy it, they've gone. 
And so you're completely right again. And they're so good to, if you've had the collection, if people have collected them over time, yeah. you can't miss out on these, can you? Because they look so beautiful. If you have a full collection of the Daisy bottles, because they've been going for years and years, they have, haven't yeah, they? Yeah. And um, they just look absolutely gorgeous, but also they smell so good. And it's safe to say that if you're a fan of fragrance, you will find oh. a Marc Jacobs fragrance that you yeah. can connect with. So we hope we've given you some inspiration. And yeah. Very, very pleased to see you again, Paul. It's no amazing problem. to have you here. And again, very proud to be working with you with Mark Jacobs with Pride. Yes. Um, and so go into store, have a look and see the fragrances and, you know, check them out yourself if you want to try them. And uh, thank you again for your time here. And we will see you very, very soon. So we look, at, look forward to seeing you again. And take care, everyone. Happy Proud.